Hey, I'm Fred. And I'm Ant. And this is Create a Generation. Create a Generation of Hype. All right, Frederico, what is happening this week? This week we are chatting to booktuber Pierre Ford. And I have been planning for a long time to do this like social experiment where I review books completely naked, but the book is like covering my bits and yeah. just to see like you just, have been talking about yeah this right while. and just seeing like could that go viral? <laughs> Booktuber. It's an interesting area, an area that seems to get a lot of love. And Pierre Ford actually has probably the most loyal fan base of any creator I've ever seen. Yeah. I've, I've never seen a creator get this much love before. Totally. And, you know, she's got a relatively small YouTube channel, about 33,000 subscribers. But, yeah. and here's the but, she is a great example of how you can take a small group of really loyal fans and turn that into something pretty amazing. Yeah, let's get into it. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Create a Generation. Uh, We have Pierre Ford from the channel Pierre Ford. Yes. (laughs) Um, We have Ant from the Melbourne studio. Hey. And we are ready to go. Okay. So, Pierre. Yes. You are a YouTuber. Yes. Do you identify as a YouTuber? (laughs) Um. On a good day, if things are going well. <laughs> I'm still figuring that one out, but uh, for the most part, yes. Uh, why don't we start by uh, telling everyone what your channel is all about? Oh, mate, okay. Uh, basically, I do like book reviews and book related content. Mm-hmm. And under the under booktubing. Under booktubing, yeah. That's right. And what type of books, Piera? Maybe let's get a bit more specific. <laughs> yeah. um, I read a lot of books. and review. <laughs> Mostly uh, adult fantasy and young adult fantasy with the occasional sci-fi thrown in there. And why did you start that? Um, I read a lot of books. I read a lot of books as a kid. I didn't have many friends as a kid. Um, and yeah, kind of that just continued onto my adult life. And I realized that there's a place where I can make friends and talk about books. No, the, the not having many friends carried on into your adult life. Yeah, no, that's still a, that's a running theme. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, cool. And how long has your channel been running for? Ooh, I think we, we, I started it in 2011, but only started posting booktube videos in maybe like 2013. Okay. And, um, Pierre, on your channel, I mean, what, what, we're talking about booktubing. I don't really watch booktubing channels. What the hell's a booktube channel? Maybe let's like, what's the difference there? Like, what are you, what's going on on a booktube channel? What are your videos like? Um, so there's kind of, I guess in the, the booktube community, there's kind of like seven or eight, uh, I guess top, not topics, but like kinds of videos that you can get. Like you can get a review, which is literally just someone who's read the book, reviewing the book, whether it's a spoiler review or a non-spoiler review. Um, you've got things like hauls and unhauls, which are literally people just being like, these are 30 books I bought this week. Um, here's what they are. Or unhauls being like, these are 30 books I'm getting rid of. Uh, you've got unboxings, which are, When subscription services, obviously more book tailored, um, send you uh, boxes full of bookish related things that you unbox for your people. Um, Tags is another one that's really big. So it's people just making up, you know, questions for you to answer uh, and theming them in like book relation somehow. Um, And then you've got kind of like your reading vlogs, which are pretty much just vlogging, reading and what your experience is like going through that. Cool. And what yeah. what sort of makes up the most of your channel? Um, usually, what do you like? What's your, what's your favorite piece of content that you're getting into at the moment? Um, at the moment, I'm really enjoying just straight up reviewing because I I you know I'm on so many uh, book related forums and stuff, seeing stuff that um like uh, viewers are saying as opposed to you know constant consumers, so viewers who kind of just come in and go out or you know hardcore viewers saying kind of what they like and what they don't like um and so I've been keeping an eye on that and it seems you know booktube is essentially a a shout into the void it's the same people reading the same books talking about the same things um and I guess what draws people is personality and their opinions on stuff but I'm really yeah like I said into reviews at the moment which is essentially what booktube started out as and what it was you know intended to be and then kind of branched out into more like fun quirky um tags relating to you know what bookish boyfriends you like um so yeah I'm, I'm enjoying getting back to just actually reading books and talking about my feelings on them as opposed to having to come up with all these crazy things that don't really have anything to do with books so cool in, in developing how long do you think it took you to gain traction um, on your channel and what was that point where you thought oh this is actually looking like people actually are liking what i'm doing um 
I'm still not sure. I'm still not sure why people are around. Um, I never understand it personally. It, I think it, it was like the first time I was like invited to an event or something that I was like, oh, wow, like people value my opinions and all I do is read fantasy books that have absolutely nothing to do with real life and, you know, contribute little life skills. So, yeah, that was probably the first time that I was like, oh, look at that. And did you have any idea it was ever going to sort of work out for you in terms of, you know, get traction as a channel? Oh, God, no. No, I can barely stand my own voice. I can't imagine why other people are like, yeah, cool. <laughs> and again, that's an interesting, it's an interesting phenomenon, that, that idea of the, um, that imposter syndrome, mm. like YouTubers who sort of make it even a, a little bit big or get some traction, um, they feel they don't deserve it or they don't know why they are where they are. Mm -hmm. um, this is something you ever, ever felt like, you know. Oh yeah, all the happening? time, yeah. all the time. I mean, like there are booktubers out there that I watch. I mean, YouTubers as well, but booktubers that I watch that, I'm kind of like, how do you have so many subscribers and like your content is terrible and that's just, you know, a personal preference. And then I see some who, you know, are considered small booktubers or medium-sized booktubers and they don't have, you know, nearly as um, as many followers or anything, but their content is, it's incredible. Like you can see that a lot of work goes into it and everything like that. And um, I mean, that is, I mean, to to look at, I mean, I, we, we do see a lot of different uh, YouTubers and I have to say your fans um, are very much in in love with with you and what you do um that that ratio of likes <laughs> to dislike is probably the the best i've ever seen on any channel um and the fans are not just um not just you know positive in their likes but their commentary is, is so um is often so positive mm -hmm. um and it's constructive yeah. and it's it's a bit odd Oh, good. Not because of you, but <laughs> good, just, I'm glad. It's, a, it's a strange thing to see that there's so much positivity ar around that. Well, is that something well, you generally I mean, find in the booktube area? That's a good question, though, Fred, there. Like, who is this audience? Like, who who's your audience, Pierre? Like, who are these people that are so passionate about what you're saying and um, doing? Well, according to my analytics, it's uh, young men and women. But to me, I think it's just the rest of the dregs of the world who kind of feel like they don't really fit in anywhere. And they're like, oh, I love fantasy books and I'll never, you know, ride a dragon and defeat a kingdom. But this chick seems to enjoy that same sort of shit. So, sorry, stuff. So maybe she'll <laughs> take us away. I, I honestly, like, I, I couldn't tell you. I'm not entirely sure. Mm. Is that your, um, you know, how a lot of creators have uh, names for their, their communities. <laughs> no, is that what you call them? The no, dregs? I definitely do not. That's actually directly from a book. So <laughs> you can see my, my influence is wide. Um, no, I don't. I, <laughs> I couldn't imagine what people would be called if it had anything to do with me. It would be very weird. It would probably be something very rude. So that's why we, that's why we haven't done that so far. <laughs> but surely there's like, I mean, there's something that gets, that gets banded around about, you know, YouTube creators and, and authenticity. There has there has to be you know the way you talk is is very honest and to to yourself and it's just very um, matter of fact. You know, that, do you think that's something that your um, audience is drawn to that that sort of I honest, th authentic? I think so. Yeah, I mean, well, like what I've gathered from comments. I mean, I'm pretty much the same person that you see on camera as opposed to in real life, with maybe like a little bit more pep on camera. Otherwise, I'm kind of like this is boring. I'm bored of myself. Um, but like in vlogs and everything, it's it's the exact same. It's just me and my everyday life. I just happen to remember to pull out a camera every now and again. Um, yeah, and I think that's kind of, you know, what I've gotten back from comments and stuff is that kind of they like that no bullshit kind of vibe, mm. I think. But I mean, I'm I'm the same. Like I, all my favorite creators are very much like this. Like, you know, they swear and they um, tell you how they really feel as opposed to the creators who, you know, won't even say the word sex on their channel in this day and age that just confuses me. Mm. So, yeah. so are you really conscious and, and deliberate about that or it's just, it's just how it is? And um, Look, I get told on a, on a regular basis to stop swearing on my channel because it will affect my monetization. Sorry, you get told things. by who to stop swearing? My friends, essentially. Just my but friends. what about your audience? <laughs> no, they love it. Yeah. So hence why it hasn't, it hasn't stopped. Um, okay. And also like that's just, yeah, to me that's not natural. If I, I mean, I'm not sure if you've noticed here me sitting trying to not swear at things is coming out not great. Uh, how, how, let's, let's take the sensor <laughs> off for a second. How about you just talk uh, exactly the way Pierre wants to talk and we will beep out either with crickets. You're 90% or... of it will just be beeped out. Really? Probably. All right. Let's, let's it's because I don't even notice it. Like that's in my videos. Right. Like I don't notice I'm swearing. Let's, like, take, swear let's take the sensor off. Morgan will keep track of when you're swearing and <laughs> she, will, so she will beep it out. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, like I said, it's there's nothing. I mean, occasionally I'll put like some mascara on and be like, I'm all, I'm all dolled up. I'm so fake as opposed to, I just got out of bed. Um, my cat slept on me and I'm allergic to my cat. So I'm, my 
eyes are watering, but they don't have to know that. But also my fans are just like, that's so funny. I love that you're allergic to your cat. It's just like, tell that to my nostrils. I haven't breathed properly in like four years. Is there any particular fan or group of fans that you're particularly close to? Like they're recurring or yeah, you, yeah. you have yeah. a good relationship with? Yeah, I talk to quite a few of them um, like through Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that. And I try to respond to comments as much as possible. But yeah, I mean, to the point where every now and again, you know, someone will send me a, a box of presents or something from God knows where. Um, and I'm like, this is really weird. Like I'm literally sitting at home in my underwear, sad that I haven't worked in three days, but okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, like, yes, there are, and I've met some of them in real life as well, which is really cool. Yeah. How important is that audience interaction to you and your channel, do you think? Oh, well, I think it's, it's pretty important. I mean, I, I'm spending, you know, X many hours a week or a day to kind of make this content and to get nothing not get anything back from it but just to feel like I'm shouting into the void which I still do sometimes anyway it's it's just that nice kind of you know I'm sure anyone's like oh you know you're doing a good job I'm like thanks thanks I really needed that today even if you know the video is trash and they're still like this is great I'm like thank you I really needed that I mean we talked about that that positivity that comes from your audience is yeah. there ever like a negative element that you see around the place um I that's one thing I've I've been really, really lucky and fortunate to have is I rarely get hate comments. Um, I mean, the only hate comments I ever really seem to get were on my short films and that was, you know, my favourite one which I framed and put in my house is she looks like a camel on crack. That's probably <laughs> one of the what? best things. Yeah, I don't know. That's I was a Pierre Ford merch. <laughs> could just straight on crack. On crack. I don't know where it came from, but it's I framed it and I put it in my house. And every now and again when it pops up on like my Facebook feed, it's like my memories, all my friends share it and we have a good laugh about it because that was probably the first negative comment I ever got. I was just very confused. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, every now and again you'll get the, oh, I can't believe you didn't like this book. That's so upsetting. But I never, you know, some of the, crea- like you see some of the hate comments creators get that's just awful. Mm. Um, yeah, and I'm really lucky not to get that. I mean, yeah, every now and again I'll get a, please stop swearing. I want to show my child this. I'm like, well, fuck your child. It's going to have to learn one day. <laughs> and then we just continue on. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't know where to go from this. <laughs> All right. You said I'm plugged and I panicked. It's good. <laughs> but like, well, what is, what's the, um, what's the norm in booktubing? Like, is it normally very, is it a very clean sort of uh, format? Uh, that's the thing. I, I'm even most days, you know, up until like the last year or so, I've been reluctant to even call myself a booktuber just because I don't think I follow the format as well as some other people do. Like the, yeah, I mean, I just kind of, in that way, I'm really lax about it. I'll be like, oh, you know, I'll post two videos this week and there'll be, one will be an unboxing, one will be a wrap up. And they're like my go-to, I at least know I can get those out. Um, but I mean, like there are in ways, like there are, and I don't want to say like rules, but you know, if you're going to talk about a book, you have to say spoiler alert or something before you go into a lengthy discussion about the book. Otherwise you get comments like, oh my God, thanks for ruining the fucking book for me. And you're just like, well, what did you expect? You came to a review on the book. Um, yeah. I mean, yes, there are probably formats out there. Do I follow them? Not all the time, not intentionally, but I also probably have at some point gone. Okay, cool. And speaking of that, like when you started the channel, um, and obviously being in, in the booktubing area, um, did you was there any strategy in it or did you just say, this is the way I'm going to do it? Yeah, I, yeah. my first video I think was a haul where I was like, hey guys, I'm going to start my booktubing career with a, here's 30 books I bought over the last month. I think your first video was a maximum. Yeah, well, in the booktubing world, yes, of course. <laughs> but in, in the booktubing world, um, okay. yeah, and then I think the next one, I think the first like three videos, like if, Please don't go back and watch them, but the editing is really terrible. The Every, thumbnails are everyone just... Everyone should go back and watch them. Please don't them. do that. What, are you talking about your short film? No, my, don't watch those either. Right. Um, don't watch anything. <laughs> no, like my first ever booktube video where I was like, I'm going to be a booktuber. How, what, like, what's your creating content for YouTube look like? Like how often do you, like how much work do you put into it? Like, um, Look, I could, uh, when I think about hours, it, I could probably put you know? more in, but I think I would just be getting the same thing, except maybe my background would be nicer. And my edits wouldn't be so shoddy. But, um, I mean, most days I, you know, I sit down for like an hour or two and I film six or seven videos that I can release over the month um, as my, like, main edited fancy professional content. Um, but then weekly, depending on what I'm doing, I'll try and do, like, a vlog throughout the week and I'll just, yeah, film my entire week and throw that up on a Friday and woohoo. That's it. And you do it all yourself. Yeah. Right. Should I? Do you want to? Should I employ someone? 
I do joke <laughs> about it every day. It's just a question. <laughs> you want a job? Um, Jacob does my thumbnails every now and again. Who's like, Jacob? My partner. Uh, just because he knows how to use Photoshop and I fucking don't. Right. So I'm like, I want you to put the book in front of the green bit and then put a fancy text. And he's like, you, you can do this on like Microsoft Paint. I was like, I'm <laughs> definitely not doing that. So. And who, you know, where'd you learn how to do all this? Uh, well, I still don't really know how to do any of it, to be honest. Um, I know how to turn my camera on and how to find focus. Uh, I had to learn how to use a microphone and a ring light and how to make soft focus in the background and hard focus on my face. But, um, yeah, I mean, like I went to film school, so I knew how to, I knew my way around a camera um, or at least an iPhone. Um, editing was harder and trying to find my style of editing. Um, and that's an interesting thing, right? Because book, book shooting, typically the format, it's, it's quite a long, they long, quite long yeah, videos, right? It's like 30 minute videos. Yeah. I'm and, sitting through that. and it's generally a f- just all words, one single shot. It's one of those really rare formats. Like even vlogging, there's a f- there's a little bit of variety, but with these, mm. it is just like almost like a stream of consciousness. Blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And it's so watchable though. The people who love it really, really love it. Mm. I did a live stream once where I unpacked my books in my new house for two and a half hours and people watched that. Yeah. And I have no fucking clue yes. why. <laughs> and you don't use anything like a teleprompter or anything like that. Oh God, no. no you just <laughs> probably be getting more work if I did. <laughs> Less swearing. Yeah. More kid friendly channels. Very my sisters nice. aren't even allowed to watch my channel anymore. So Oh really? Yeah. Mum banned them. They're on it, but they're not allowed to watch it. Uh, nice. Oh, <laughs> Mum, if you're listening. <laughs> that's no, not don't cool. you know I'm forging a career? <laughs> and then when I'm a millionaire and you're like, Oh, help me, I'll be like, No, you wouldn't let my fucking kids watch my video. <laughs> no. <laughs> no dollars. You ever had a video that's done really well that you never thought would do well? Any of them. All of them. Every single one. How about your your uh, your famous uh, Blue Balls uh, video? Um, I don't think that went... I don't think that did that well. Yeah, they did pretty well. Should have done it? better. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I think that was one of the ones where I was like, this will be a funny title. Like, this will catch people off guard. They'll be like, oh, shit, that's such a Pierre thing to say. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like, I the ones that I don't think are going to... Oh, my God, this is just... It's funnily enough... On BookTube, a book reviewing platform, book reviews get the least amount of views. Yeah. Um, that is an interesting. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like you're literally there to review books, but people would rather watch you unbox Soap Dick than <laughs> talk about a book. <laughs> um, you understand why people click on that, don't you? Please like, please insert a photo of the Soap Dick. Soap Dick. Oh. <laughs> it was purple and sparkly. I, 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 like I said, I don't watch much BookTube. People thought it was a dildo to start that. with. Right. So <laughs> it makes you feel any better. <laughs> It's made for. Yeah. It's made for. It. Have you ever had a viral video? Fuck no, really? no. You've seen the shit I make. None of that is going viral anytime soon. Although I was, I was planning, and I have been planning for a long time to do this like social experiment, where I review books completely naked, but the book is like covering <laughs> my bits, and yeah. just to see like you just, have been talking about yeah, this for right? a while, yeah. and not even men- like not drawing attention to the fact that I'm nude, like not having the word naked in anything, maybe like the thumbnail. I'm definitely never going to do this because I definitely don't have the self esteem for it, but. And just seeing, like, could that go viral? I think it I'm, probably would. I would never do that, though. <laughs> I think you'd have um, issues from, um, like, a monetization oh, point yeah, of view. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but well, it would be a pretty popular to channel. See, just <laughs> to be like, oh, yeah, well, well, good to know what people value these days. Yeah. So. Look, if anyone's got the guts to do it, Pierre, I think you probably do, even though I don't it know. Just probably depends on how you get out of bed <laughs> that day. If I get out of bed that day. Hey, fuck, I could just do the review in the bed. Um. Yeah, no. It's, um, <laughs> Didn't you do that once, like reviews from bed? Yeah, no. Or review something, and you just went. In I did my bed for the whole video. It's just the story of my life. Um, I'm sure. Yeah, I spend. A, I read a lot in bed, so I assume a lot of my reading blogs are in bed. Or I did like a a, a piss take of my reading routine because you know how all like the like the lifestyle bloggers do like my morning routine, and it's like I get up and I meditate, and I you know drink baby virgin tears and stuff like that, and it's real sweet and like relaxing, and then I. Do mine and it's like, yeah, I fucking chug a bottle of Coke, I chuck on my ugliest clothes that I definitely haven't washed in like a week, throw myself into bed and, you know, fuck around for like an hour before I actually do any reading. Okay. What came before before the booktube videos? Uh, so originally I created my channel to make um, short book to film adaptations, specifically for a book called Maximum Ride. Mm, okay. I'm I mean, a fan of like adaptation stuff because nobody else is really doing it. Like apart from like the big Hollywood studios who are definitely doing it. Mm. Like fan films um, are even not entirely the same thing if they're like original fan films, they're kind of more original content. Mm. But it's like um, truthful adaptations of a film. Like books wouldn't be turned into film if their book wasn't so popular to begin with. Like if the book wasn't being sold and 
people raving about it. No film producer is going to be like, oh, yeah, I'll spend some fucking money on that. Um, and so that's why truthful adaptations will always, like the fan base, the original fan base will always herald that to such a high review as opposed to people who just go see it in the, in the cinema. Like, oh, it was a good film. Which is why, you know, like Catching Fire was such a big deal to me because as like I loved the books so hard and then to see the adaptation done in a way that was so specific and so well that I was just like, this has just expanded the world for me and it's made it 10 times more enjoyable than a book, than like, than the book, but also. Is that Hunger Games? Hunger Games, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and then, you know, for example, Maximum Ride, like we did it with our one camera and two crew people and it was terrible and people loved it and then a big studio picked it up for money and everybody hates it because it was terrible. Um, and why was it terrible? <sighs> I don't want to be one of those people who like bitches about it, but I'm going to because I'm so bitter about it. Uh, the CGI this, this, was this, atrocious. The acting was terrible. It was just a money grab. Jenna Marbles produced it for fuck's sake. Like Jenna Marbles produced Jenna it. Marbles put money into it. The lead That's actress fun. now refuses to acknowledge that she was even in it. Interesting. We've had something we can talk about more broadly. Like you've made something that was low tech but had a lot of viewership and people really loved. Mm. And then they made it, you know, based on what they thought would be popular. Yeah. And it instantly failed. It happens all the time to adaptations. It does. Yeah, like um, Shadowhunters for the moment. Shadowhunters is like by Cassandra Clare is one of the most popular YA series ever, ever created. Mm. Um, they did a movie out of it. People didn't like the movie. They, for some reason, I don't know why, but now they're like, I would, would rather have the movie than the like the series. And then mm. Freeform made a series, and it's like I haven't, I haven't watched. It. I wasn't a fan of the series, but again, few of the reviews are good, mm. and it's just why. Don't give us something terrible. Mm. Like you can only stand to make more money if you do something well. If you look at it from a business point of view, is it is it not done well, or is it that they can't connect with the audience in the way everyone like it, the book has or the, Maybe. the like content I, I, have? Yeah, I couldn't yeah. tell you. I mean, I, like I understand, you know, as a as a filmmaker, I understand having to change things for film reasons or money constraints. But it's when you change things completely that you're just like the fuck. Like, why would you? You know, one of my favorite books at the moment there. Um, they're going through talks about adapting and one of the main points in the series that everybody loves is the friendship between like the two main guys. Mm. And then someone's like, oh, well, let's just change one of the guys into a girl and make it a love triangle. Yeah. And automatically people are like, why the fuck? Like we and, don't need that. And there it is. And I think the thing is when a studio does it, there are all these considerations they have, mm. right? And that they have to bring into it and yeah. that it does start chipping away that authentic element that connects with the audience. Whereas when you pick up a camera and you, you know, recreate a scene it's what was real to you and often what was real to you was real to the audience and mm. there's nothing else you're adding to it and there's yep. that element there. So, yeah. I mean, that's the, a lot of that authenticity from it's what people love YouTubers, right? There's that thing is that they connect directly with what the YouTuber is saying and how they're saying it. Um, whereas with big productions, there are like a million people yeah. talking about different things and it, it, it loses that feeling. When I'm on the mic. Fred, let's take a quick break here and just give ourselves a big plug. We are super excited by this new initiative. We have created the Changer Creator College. The Creator College, quite simply, is a place where you can get a whole bunch of online courses, including our brand new Accelerate course for YouTube, designed to help emerging and new creators become even better on the world's biggest video platform. The reason we think it's pretty good is that it's not just our opinions, but the opinions of a bunch of really great creators and experts coming together to give you a very logical structured course damn right it is the college just for creators so check it out at changercollege.com that's c-h-a-n-g-e-r college.com now your channel has had an it's an interesting history because like you said it started as one thing and then it slightly pivoted to something else right and it's something we see with, I guess, a lot of creators. Um, they start from one area and then they sort of find a, a niche in another area and then they sort of move into that. Um, and I guess you've had an interesting experience with that because you did start as a bunch of short films, um, which got quite a bit of attention. Mm -hmm. um, and then you moved on to what was more of a, a, a vlogging, booktubing style. So do you want to tell us about that transition from, you know, what inspired those first short films form films what and why you decided to change that around and go to the other format yeah um so when i was younger obviously my favorite book was maximum ride by james patterson um I kill for what, james patterson is he the same does the crime writer james yep. ah yep. i was looking at that i think it's the same guy it's the same guy he has a lot of books yeah. um yeah so i they there was talk about um i think universal bought the option rights for a feature film 
Um, and when I'm not doing YouTube, I'm mostly an actor. Uh, and so I was thinking this was around the time when like stranger, th- not stranger things were happening. Things that were happening weren't kind of the normal go to an audition, get the cast, get the role. Um, so essentially I made the short films as a way to kind of show myself in the role. So that way we could kind of tweet that out. Um, I'm not sure Twitter was even around then, but kind of get that in front of the people who were doing the film, um, you know, being 18 and having very large dreams and now knowing that it doesn't work that way all the time. But um, yeah, so we made the short films. Like you said, they for some reason went really well online. I kind of obviously like that tapered off as um, as I grew up, as um, the rights got sold to a studio over in America to make a web series. And yeah, I found like, you know, I couldn't afford to do short films every day of the week. Um, although I'd love to and booktubing was just kind of one of those easier things that's still content it's still something that I love doing it's still something that I love talking about and making but it was just kind of easier to do okay so it's interesting you said that you'd started those series um, and they were very popular and then the rights got sold to another studio in the US Mm -hmm. Um, was did that have anything to do with the popularity of the web series you created um I I personally think so but I mean that's not confirmed or anything but like that's that's kind of what the vibe was like our web series kind of picked up and then uh, I think the author or his people kind of realized that uh, online is a space for there is like a space for narrative and stuff like that Um, because the guys who picked it up yeah optioned it for our web series and kind of got onto us and asked kind of how we did it what our stuff was about so they made contact with you before they went ahead Uh okay and how did that web series go when they made it um, so I think they originally were making the web series and then it, I don't remember the specifics, but it got picked up and extended to a feature film because right. I know it was on Netflix for a while there. Um, and it is a film. <laughs> it's definitely a film. What do you think of that film, Sierra? <laughs> oh, I'm not a fan personally. <laughs> not, Are the not, fans fans? I don't think I've seen one positive review, but nice. I am also old and bitter now. <laughs> old. How old are you, Piera? I am 25. Ah, very old. Yeah. Very bitter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So you stopped with the um, the short films mm-hmm. and you wanted to go more into books. Was that like sort of a, was it like a necessity or was it just a lack of options? How did, what was the reason you went um, into that? Yeah. I mean, a bit of both. Like I saw, it was around the time that I kind of discovered booktube as well. There was maybe, you know, if there was like three or four big American YouTubers who were doing it. Um, and a lot more smaller, so it was kind of the only three that you really had to look up to were the the American three. Um, Yeah, and I just found, you know, I was consuming so much content and not, like, none of my friends read, so I wasn't really able to talk about books to them with them having a full understanding of what I was going on about. Um, Yeah, and, like, the fact that I want to do book-to-film adaptations, like, that's kind of my goal career-wise, but obviously it's, it's so difficult... And then when it comes like to all the legal things as well, you just kind of have to be careful with that. But kind of, yeah, I mean, it was around that time that I was kind of losing hope with the maximum ride thing that I was like, oh, you know, booktubing is a thing I'd like to try as well. Um, people seem to enjoy my recommendations. In real life, may as well branch out to the internet. So it was born out of despair. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> like most of the things I right. start. Yeah. It's funny because a lot of YouTubers we talk to, um, their channels do start very organically mm. um, due to something else. Like, like they may have started in one area and they pivot to another area or they just randomly start somewhere. Um, and it's interesting once they build that following up. Now you had that following that came from the short form uh, films and then you switched to booktubing. How did your audience take that change? Um, look, I'll be honest, around that time I wasn't really sure what was going on with YouTube. I still like I was still trying to figure out how it all worked. Um, I think at that point all I was, you know, excited about was how many views I would get and how many subscribers I had and if I had more than one comment that wasn't just like first or <laughs> um, exclamation marks. So I I mean I I think it went well. I mean the people stuck around for some reason, so that's always fun and I mean even seeing now whenever I post anything maximum ride related, I get like an influx of people. Being like, oh, hey, you're back. And it's kind of like, oh, never gone, but hmm. I have other things to do. Okay. Yeah. When I watched your first video on Maximum Ride. I'm so sorry. No, uh, I was I was, I was actually interested because I always watch the first video a creator does. Yeah. And compare it to where they are now. And I have to say, I actually really liked your first video. And I think it's my most viewed video. <laughs> it is. It's, it's very <laughs> popular. And it was very well done. And there was so much, I guess you, there was so much excitement about the topic like you mm. genuinely loved that book 
You have no idea. Yeah. Like uh, you, you don't. Well, I can't I, explain it to I you. Not that I've if you've ever been video. a 16 year old girl obsessed with anything, it's And I have at one point, but yeah, it, it, it has been. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, it was, it was, it was genuinely interesting. I and mean, I have no interest in young adult um, content. And I mean, I've tried to read it, it just doesn't appeal to me. But I was very interested in the idea of, of the book just because of how much you liked it. Mm. And I, and I, and that's interesting so because we don't normally see, um, that level can, you know, sort of continue. So usually your first videos as a YouTube creator is usually a, nowhere near as good as your current videos. Um, but yeah, I thought the video was actually quite good and it stands up really well. And I think that that's something you've probably maintained is that tone. Is that everything you've thought about? Like maintaining that tone and pace and um, manner? I don't put a lot of thought into anything I really do, mm. um, which is probably why I get into a lot of trouble a lot of the time. <laughs> I just kind of do things and they luckily for some ridiculous reason turn out okay um but no i mean like the one thing i've i mean i don't have the capacity or energy in me to be anything other than i am and so that means like you know i'm not doing fashion reviews or makeup looks that aren't you know character related and i think that's largely why my viewers like me so much because i kind of they know when you come to my channel you're getting a specific kind of vibe or tone as you said as opposed to being like oh is she gonna post like a, a mukbang today which nobody really cares about <laughs> so mm. well that's one thing you have been super consistent from that first video till where you are right now yeah nothing and, and you do about, about three videos <laughs> you know, a week nothing's changed. Like, uh yeah you sort of pierre alluded to it earlier a bit like trends like there's trends across youtube you know mm -hmm. the mukbang thing there's trends in the in the booktubing booktubing world mm -hmm. um you've sort of What's your experience with, you know, following them, um, breaking uh -oh. out of them? You know, like, uh, yeah, obviously, the first video you did was your book haul. Um, <laughs> just looking back at your channel right now and the my first book haul is the, the thumbnail, just white yeah. text on black background. Yeah, it's That's, atrocious. It's okay, thing. we don't need to make um, fun of it. I was young, yeah, I was what, learning. What's your experience with, you know, um, following trends and, and your advice on that to so other creators? I mean, if... I mean, I like the book booktube community is pretty welcoming. I uh, apparently it's also pretty clicky, but I being outside of that, I'm this is just what I hear. Um, in terms of myself following trends, I think I tried it for like a week and it didn't go very well because I just stopped caring about it myself. Where like you know, for example, um, a popular new release will come out, and so every booktuber and their dog has a video on it somehow. It's in the thumbnail. It's in a vlog. It's in a catchy title. Um, which every now and again, like, yeah, it's I'm doing it anyway, so I may as well kind of jump on the hype train. But I kind of, you know, there was um, maybe about a month ago a subscription box, which was for adults only, sent out. Um, it was a soap dick. Essentially, it was a, a dick made of soap um, <laughs> <laughs> off a book character. For a book? Yeah, for a book. Awesome. And Because that's what we're getting to these days. Um, so but everyone, yeah, like everyone made a video about their opinions on soap dick. It was called Soap Dick Gate. Um, yeah, and I just remember thinking, like, somebody has probably already said what I'm thinking anyway, if I have any real thoughts on it. I definitely don't need to make a video about me thinking about soap dick. So I've got, you know, <laughs> I've got things to do. Like, I don't, no one needs that. Um, yeah, but I mean, like, if you're, in, if you're new to the community, you need kind of, like, those easy ways in if you don't really know what you're doing. Like, you can't go wrong with a haul or a wrap-up or anything like that, so... Do you find that um, I mean, you talked about not being interested in, in following those trends? Do you find that um, like that hampers you sometimes compared to other tubers who might follow them? Yeah, probably. I mean, every now and again, like um, like booktube is probably more prominent in America. Like, there's a lot more of them over there. They have a lot more opportunities. There's a lot more book related I don't know, events, uh, access to authors, and stuff like that. So the Australian community is a lot smaller, uh, and I think a lot more tight knit as well. But you know, there's a week over in the states where there's I think three book events three big bookish events and everybody goes to them and everybody uploads a vlog and everybody's in everybody's vlog and it's just like this incestuous pool of booktubers talking about the same book mm. which you know it would be great to go to but even then like i wouldn't i feel like i i don't know as an outsider it's just very i can't imagine myself going in and being like let's all be best friends and take videos and i'm in your vlog so now people follow me more and i just i don't i don't buy it it's not kind of why that's what i signed up for if you went and did that mm. what do you think your audience would think of that um i mean i think it would depend on i guess the content that i show up with eventually i mean uh, it happened to 
one of the bigger booktubers recently. I mean, it, um, there's there's like a gossip website that I follow every now and again to suss out what's going on, kind of like the tabloids. Um, but she was like a big favourite of, of a lot of people and she started going – she was from Canada or something and she started going to these um, events with everyone and kind of melded her personality into that and her videos kind of changed and people noticed um, and people didn't like it. So I think, you know, like avoiding that sort of stuff. And like I said, I don't have time for anything that's not myself. So I, like I can already tell you my, my videos would be – vastly different from theirs where they kind of get together and do like a photo shoot and nothing there's really no book talk it's just people hanging out Mm. you're talking about still being um interested in that area of of, Mm -hmm. of short film and you know i guess mainstream film that's something you want to do is that something you want to use your youtube channel to do as leverage and move into yeah, exactly. I mean, like I said before, before I started YouTube, I'm primarily an actor. Um, so that was kind of always the goal. And considering it's like the wild west of YouTube these days, you know, people are getting cast from YouTube videos. People are getting noticed from, you know, Instagram posts or something like that. So it, it was worth a shot. And whenever I kind of talk to people in the industry, they, they always find it really interesting that I'm creating my own stuff and putting it out there and that it's getting such um, good feedback, I guess. How do they how do they react? Like, I mean, obviously, it's, it's, it is like the wild west and... Mm. A lot of traditional TVs, but scared. Mm. Um, but at the same time, they're looking at the opportunities there. Yeah. So for someone who's seen success in that, has that set you apart from everyone else competing? Um, I, I mean, like I, I think so. When I've kind of mentioned it, or someone has mentioned it back to me, that's always that seems to be something that they're like, oh, that's really cool. Like, not many people are doing that. It's cool to see that you're doing that. Um, keep doing that. Do more of that. Do do it as well as you can. Um, and I do think like it's definitely presented me with a lot more opportunities than, you know, my friend who doesn't have much social media, who's doing the more traditional route and everything like that. Um, yeah, like essentially uh, I want to make book to film adaptations. I want to work in film, but I kind of, the YouTube side of it, I enjoy as that connection with the audience and the connection with the fans. Like I would, mm. you know, be, if I was working on a film, I would still do behind the scenes vlogs and everything and kind of, cause I know as a young filmmaker myself, I, there wasn't really that too much of that out there when I started. Like I'd want to see what actors were doing on set every day. I'd want to see how a writer adapted a book or whatever. Um, and there wasn't too much of that as someone who was young and not really in the industry yet to kind of to learn from or to go off. And I kind of want to be one of those people who they can be like, oh, you know, like Pierre did a, a video on how to, adapt a, uh, how to adapt a book or something. Like that would be cool to watch and kind of go through our process as opposed to just being mm. like, I'm a celebrity now, now. Like here's my Instagram of me looking fantastic in my Gucci shoes or I think they make shoes. Um <laughs> Yeah, as opposed yeah, to shoes, like, yeah. they do make shoes, cool. Yeah, as opposed totally. to, you know, the, the one I'm working on now, I've been working on for like six months and everything. It, most of it's just me staring at the camera being like, I'm fucked. Like, I can't do this. This is too much. And then every now and again being like, oh, a little win. So just showing that it's not all, you know, glitz and glam and success, that there are those downfalls and you do have to work for things. And that's the, that's the kind of content you'd like to see. Yeah. Is the kind of content you watch on YouTube? Um, When I can find it, it's not the easiest to find. But yeah. every now and again, like, I'll find something like that where it's a, it feels... Yeah, more personable, more real, more like, oh, you know, like you see celebrities every day, like, oh, I was just a nobody from, you know, but fuck nowhere. If I can do it, you can do it. And I'm kind of like, well, that's great and all, but you're getting an Oscar and <laughs> I'm still sitting on my couch, you know, licking crumbs off my chest from dinner. So it would be nice to kind of see how you got there. And I know obviously you get success stories. Like I was picked up walking down the street the other day, but then you see, you know, I want to see about the, the actors and the filmmakers and the creators who, you know, started from nowhere and worked their way up and got knocked back and then, you know, had successes and losses and everything like that and just kind of everything in between. Yeah, and that's, that's actually tremendous. And it's, it's actually a, a, one of the sort of big reasons we started this this channel was the fact that no one seemed to really understand the success factors about YouTube or, mm. you know, you hear about them broadly, but that story just seems to be like you were at zero and now you're all the way here. Yeah. Um, and that journey wasn't particularly well plotted or understood. Mm. Um, and I think there are fans who really are really, and you know, and, and aspiring YouTubers who are really keen to understand how, what that is, what that's all about. So it, it's it's um, it is an interesting so, thing, and I think it's something that I think a lot of people don't necessarily consciously think about. Yeah. When you yeah, when you're on, on that, then Pierre, have you la- landed any roles as an actor because of your YouTube channel? Like. I, I mean, like I, I couldn't say off the top of my head. I think it's it's definitely helped. And if it's not roles, it's at least like um, being invited to events or being considered to interview authors for, you know, big panels or stuff like that. Um, roles, I'm not sure. Like I think it varies. Sometimes it is still the normal traditional route. You know, I still do acting classes. I still do normal castings. I still do self-tapes. Um, 
But I think, you know, every now and again, something will pop up out of the blue and they're like, oh, you know, she's got a bit of a social media following. She's got a YouTube channel that, you know, seems to go well. If we put her in this, we'll at least get that many views and people coming over and stuff like that, which I understand from a business point of view, but I'm also always like, you know, am I the best person for this job? Like, um, so yeah, kind of coming from the more traditional side and being trained in the more traditional side and then coming into this new world is, is a bit of a mishmash. I'm not, you know, like expecting to book roles off my Instagram photos or anything. <laughs> what about, you know, you say the, the whole, you know, honest, authentic thing, like, you know, you, you, you don't just come up from nowhere and win an Oscar. Like, what about that, you know, getting knocked on your butt? Um, um, you'll get more you, of those you know, than you will of successes. Yeah, <laughs> I that. think that's any creative um, venture that you go down. I mean, you'll always have more. It's What do they say? Like, you know, for every 600 rejections, you get one yes. Um, and it's so true. And it's so true. Um, but I guess even in the, for example, like I'll, whenever I see like a big YouTuber or a big creator, I will go back and watch their very first video just to see the difference, you know, between then and now and to see what people were responding to well then, what they were doing well then and kind of what they found works. And, um, you know, seeing that, not, not trying to emulate it, but being aware of that and trying to apply that to my work and my videos is always interesting because, you know, there's, you know, you know, YouTube people for their specific things like you know what PewDiePie does you know like David Dobrik does um and I'd love to be you know I'd love to be on that same sort of level but it's obviously like booktube is such a niche thing that it's you know it's never going to be that big I think the biggest booktuber has like 230,000 and if you compare that to like a makeup guru who has like six million or something it's very like that's what we consider big is 230,000. Yeah, but like, um, I, and this is a, a misconception too. I mean, we we work with YouTubers who have you know twenty thousand, ten thousand subscribers, and they have a very, very good career. Yeah. Uh, and the reason is they leverage it into other things. Mm. Um, and you know, YouTube is about n- niches and niches, and um, trying to really understand that and feel it out. So, but you still feel like two hundred thirty thousand is not enough to be viable on um, the platform. I mean, in in like the booktube community, like. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's, you know, um, getting brand deals and sponsorships and talking to, um, like, authors and getting invited, all those big things. But when you put it in comparison to, like, big beauty vloggers or anything like that, it's you see it's significantly less. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. And, look, I mean, what would then do you see YouTube as a career for you? Um, I, I would love it to be, but I don't think in the capacity that it, I'm at now. Like, I don't think BookTube would be a career. Like it would be a fun, like I still get to do, you know, interview authors or um, host events or, you know, go see things, but it's not what I want to be kind of known for. It's, I feel like I could do more with adaptations and film work as that's, that's more my strength. So how do you think you're going to use YouTube to get into that? Um, well, I think I I really enjoy it as a place for kind of feedback and learning. Like when I because obviously like I said adaptations are where I want to go but what makes me think I can do an adaptation better than you know Universal who has like a billion dollars and a million people who've been working for years um, and just trying to figure out what people like of what I can do and how that could be applied um, more broadly I guess so just kind of yeah and le- like learning like I learn so much from what people think and you know it's nice to have one thing I've noticed from being on YouTube and I guess social media in general when it comes to the book community is like how much m- more aware I've become of like, I don't want to say political issues, but just like the world. Like I'm a, I'm a real hermit. Like I don't really see outside of my bubble just out of, cause I'm useless, but <laughs> sitting on the internet and everything, like I've learned so much in the last like four years that I now, you know, take over to my everyday life, which is just phenomenal, which I wouldn't have had that ability to do if I didn't have some sort of presence on social media or on YouTube. So if it's not YouTube, so like how do you see you taking what you're doing and, and going to that level of book adaptations to film? Like what are you doing? What are you doing about it? Um, well, the plan is to keep making like, – I don't mean that as a challenge. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> what are you doing? Just, well, what are, actually. <laughs> what are you doing about it? Um, like, what are you, what a few are things. you doing about it? Um, well, I was lucky enough to receive a grant from Screen Australia recently to do a book-to-film adaptation, which we're still working on at the moment. Um, but, yeah, I mean, my – plan if I really were to have one is just to continue doing more short films more short scenes of adaptations and kind of just upping the ante every time um and seeing if they 
interest anyone who has a bit of pull in the world who will then come back kind of what happened with Screen Australia and say, hey, are you actually interested in this? And me being like, yeah, of course I am. And then being like, oh, cool, well, we want help. So just kind of that. I'm like, I'm really bad at networking. And so being able to network online where I can kind of hide behind it in that way makes me seem a lot more professional and like I know what I'm doing as opposed to when I'm just like sitting here sweating and shitting my pants over like, please believe in me. I have a good idea. So... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and you see that content, you know, those, those short films, yapping the ante. You see that living online still. You're finding that audience, yeah, yeah on I YouTube, think so. elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, because like I said before, I like the connection. Like I like being able to make something, being able to make, especially like the behind the scenes, like real vlogs, as opposed to the really fancy ones where everything's going great and there are no problems and no one's screwing us over. Um, and then getting immediate feedback from people who also love the same thing. Like you know, you can take a a film to a theater and see some reviews online a week later or something but I like the immediacy of like hey do you like what I did and people are like yeah I love that that was great or like no that was terrible do it better so that's just me I'm one of those like millennials who's like I like instant gratification mm. so <laughs> how are you and, and then how are you going about making these films short films and, and excerpts etc and book adaptations like how are you how are you doing that you know you, are you with great difficulty you, yeah you know you <laughs> built this massive team of producers and directors and mm. actors and off um, you go with a ba- huge bag of money like how are you doing that <laughs> well it's not always it's definitely not always a huge bag of money that becomes my main problem the the shitty thing about doing and loving fantasy is that everything will cost so much money and it's not just you know two people walking down brisbane city streets it's you know two people with elf ears and one of them has a glowing eye and one of them has like three wings or something ridiculous and that costs an arm and a leg and your firstborn um yeah i mean that's yeah, I don't – I struggle. Like it's like I said, more no's than yeses. Um, it's more, oh, shit, I can't do this. It's too big as opposed to, oh, yeah, fuck it, I can do it. Um, yes, again, forgot the question and rambling. No, no, it's good. So what do you do when you get told no? Right. Like how, how do you keep moving forward? Like, um, Well, look, I sulk about it for like a day uh, <laughs> and then I'm kind of like, fuck, I don't have time for this. I'm, I'm getting old. I don't have time to be sulking about shit that I can't control, so I'll just – do it again and I'll do it better and I'll try harder and maybe next time. And if it's not next time, then it'll be the fucking next time. And if it's not, then I die knowing I tried. <laughs> <laughs> so just really motivational stuff here. And, and self-belief <laughs> is that the short answer. Oh, look, I don't even know if self-belief is a thing. I doubt myself daily. I get out of bed and I was like, nah, you've done that wrong. <laughs> so I just, it really, it depends on how I wake up when I feel. Some days I wake up and I'm like, I'm going to channel, you know, my favorite badass female assassin I'm going to take on the world and I'm going to kick the patriarchy in the face and other days I'm like I'm just going to stay in bed and pretend I'm like a slug and just not move and have my partner feed me and my cat sleep on me and just you know consider what it would be like to be like a non-sentient being and whatever so it's great like it really it really varies it's it's zero to a hundred real quick was there any one particular area you like talking about more than another area I like talking about kind of I guess giving back to people i don't know if like more with it was more with the film stuff though like yeah um when people reach out and like oh i saw what you did i want to do that even though i'm you know i'm a 13 year old high school student i want to learn film how can i start like, well fucking yeah grab a camera grab your friends write a shitty script and jump on board I've got, got three it. tips it doesn't matter like for anyone who who wants to be yeah creating youtube content whether that's a booktuber or a, if it's more universal across a youtube creator like uh, well, what would you <laughs> want to know coming in like when you started mm-hmm. uh, back in the day, what Maybe would you want to have known that you know now? Um, fuck. Like, I guess don't be afraid to, like, approach people who you think are bigger than you was one thing that I – like, I've met one of my best friends now because she – like, she's the biggest booktuber in Australia. And I – you know, she was one of the videos that I started watching when I was a baby. Um, and I just comment every now and again, like, oh, like – it's cool that you like this book or, oh, what do you think about this book? And eventually I became someone with, um, what is it? Where well, you get fans and they're like, okay, you're relevant. So I became relevant. And then she was like, cool, now we're friends. Um, which obviously isn't the case because fuck, I'm really bad at this. Um, it would depend because obviously what is important to being a vlogger is important, is different to being a booktuber, is different to being a makeup guru, is different to blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'd probably turn more to like the, I'd want to turn more to the booktube side, but it would be shit just like, you know, make sure your, your equipment is decent enough because, you know, I'm, how often do you watch a, a pix, pixelated shit quality video? Often. Um, 
but why? That's my fetish. I like watching them. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> Everyone's like two pixels. <laughs> <laughs> two pixels, like, yeah. <laughs> I fucking love that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Green and grey. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> editing is also another thing, as I said earlier, but again, depends on what you do. Like, you know, for example, David Dobrik, who I just go down a deep hole of literally daily. I spend like an hour watching his videos of, you know, four minutes and 20 seconds. They have no real, like, I couldn't tell you what is going on in any of those videos, but everyone's laughing and it's funny. Um, Pierre Ford, thanks for check it out. creator generation. <laughs> Welcome. Deuces. Thank you. Good night. It's been amazing. Thank you. Well, Pierre certainly does have some very interesting opinions and some very good advice. Oh, fucking A. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any questions for Piera, if you have any questions for us, let us know on the Creative Generation app. And if you want any creative featured on the show, let us know as well. Yeah, we'll track them down. We'll get them on the show. Until next time. Bye. See ya. Creative Generation. Look on the mic.